Hi, I'm Massimo Capra and I travel the world in search of good food and interesting places. Today I'm in Glasgow, Scotland's largest city. If you come here, you're going to love the gastronomy. I'm going to meet with Colin Clydesdale. He and his family are an institution in this town. He led the charge on enhancing the food experience by using all locally grown ingredients. Man, I can't wait to cook with him. But you know, I feel very comfortable here. I'm even thinking of changing my name. Let me think. I got it. Massimo Capra. Follow me. I had a little time before meeting Colin Clydesdale, so I took the time to take a look around Glasgow and learn about the city. I came to Glasgow to cook with Colin Clydesdale, and I really hope he shows me how to prepare a traditional haggis. I had heard of this unique statue in front of the Gallery of Modern Art, that, well, let's just say I needed to see. Why? Because it's a Glasgow icon. Now, that's modern art. I just had to get fitted for a kilt. I never worn one before. You know what they say, when in Glasgow, get a kilt or something like that. So can you give me a, a little brief history of the kilt? I mean, how did it come about and how was it worn in the past? Well, traditionally the kilt was one just one giant piece of cloth right. that uh, the Highlanders used to just roughly pleat. Um, they would lie down on it and they would just wrap it around them. There was extra folds that they could store, you know, anything they were hunting. If they right. killed a rabbit or whatever, they could keep it in the pleats of the... Of the it was called a filimore, which means a great kilt. Back in the day, it was just a, a, a leather pouch, and you would carry oatmeal in it just in case. When oatmeal? You were, oatmeal, yeah. If you, were hunt, <laughs> if you were hunting and you didn't kill, you would need something to eat. Oh, yeah, you're so, right, you're right. Obviously, these days, you don't really keep oatmeal yeah, in it. All you carry is cell phones and... Uh, cell phones, pens, etc. So, uh, not really much need for oatmeal these days. Right. <laughs> so, I really want to get into a uh, kilt myself. I, I'm going to go to try and put you in the Tartan Army Children's Charity Tartan. I think that sounds like the, the, the kilt for you. Wow. <laughs> ah, hey, thank you. Is it breezy in here? Very. Is it? Yeah. I can feel a breeze. I don't know why. I think I look good in a kilt. And maybe I'll wear it when I cook with Colin. But I didn't dress really traditional, if you know what I mean. Perfect. It was time to meet Colin Clydesdale. He asked me to meet him at his favorite coffee shop to talk about the food scene and meet some of his suppliers. Man, there was no time for pleasantries. We just jumped right into it. The taxis here really let you know where you are. All right, off to see Colin. We've got, we've got three places in Glasgow. And one, of them, right. one has been there since uh, before fine dining was actually invented in Glasgow. Fantastic. Uh, 40 years. My father started it in 1971. Okay. He didn't know where to source ingredients from Paris. Right. Or Milan. Right. Or, or Madrid. Right. So he bought it from guys that he knew who were local. <laughs> and the big hippie who drank in the bar happened right. to also be a scallop diver. Right. So the scallops came from the big hippie in the bar. Right. We have suppliers to this day, I don't even know their surname. Fantastic. You know? I love that. I love that. So um, everything was local by default, by naivety. Right. And Scotland has, well, the best produce in the world, bar none on our doorstep. We're going to start off with, it's kind of a fusion dish. Okay. Haddies, smoked haddies. Okay. Very haddies Scottish. Is, uh, ha smoked haddock. haddock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very, very Scottish. Your grandmother used to poach them in milk for you and okay. tatties for your tea. But what we're doing is a kind of ceviche thing. Yep. Um, which is very fresh, very light, very Scottish, mm -hmm. but not. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about an haggis. Am I saying it right? Haggis? Haggis. Haggis Perfect. with an H in front of it. It is not yeah. all about haggis. Okay. But I'll not hear a bad word said against haggis because haggis, haggis is magnificent. None to say. When it's done right, <laughs> it's magnificent. And it's, it's special. Are we making it? We're going to, we, well, we, we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll go through it. Okay. But I have to swear you secret to secret. Oh, secret recipe now, come on. Okay. Taking some fine wee roe deer that are from, from Ayrshire. Uh, they've been grallacht. Deer? Deer. Okay. We're going to make it with deer. And then we're going to move on to venison. Right. With some barley risotto. Again, uh -huh. very Scottish. You're taking the, you know, the most humble of ingredients. That's right. And the most regal of ingredients. 
combining the two. Okay. Well, you know what? The day is getting on. Well, we have our limousine yeah. outside, so I reckon we head off. Limousine? Yeah. Oh, that? Yeah. Our, our carriage awaits. Colin's limo is called a Tuk Tuk. Let me tell you, we turn heads on the way to his fish supplier. Good, big size langoustines oh, here. Beautiful. You know? So Lovely the, color. These are called langoustines. Here are the langoustines, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is what I know as scampi. Yeah, well, I mean, the, look at that. watch yourself. I know, I just, uh, uh, the poor thing is tired, look at that. <laughs> but what we're looking for, the yeah. haddies should be over here. Now, the two lunatics that, that run this shop right. smoke all their own fish. Come on. Yeah, every bit of it. Beautiful. What we're looking for are these. Right. Right. Right, so this is what we're going to have for lunch. Gorgeous. Okay. Oh my. I feel eat, like eating it like that. Well, that is well, so delicious. We're only going to cook it a tiny bit, so you more or less are eating it. Hang that. on, hang on. I got salivation happening over here, man. <laughs> don't drill, don't drill. James, you know. can you wrap some of these up for us? All right. Cheers, man. So here we are at Melissa's. Oh, that looks good. That's ah, great. It's a yeah. great, great <laughs> shop. Afternoon, gents. How you doing, man? Oh, good afternoon. But this is gorgonzola, I know this cheese. Yeah, well I just thought we'd start with the rubbish before we smooth on to Oh, <laughs> now you're fighting words over here. Give me a good gooey bit, please. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. A good gooey bit. Well, I'm done. That is good, huh? <laughs> oh, come on. This is a... Don't a even rubbish. ask. It's an unpasteurized sheep's milk cheese. Okay. Me. Sheep's milk? I'll wait for you, man. You're not really a nibbler, are you? No. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll split this one, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> I love cheese, and this place gave us all the sampling we wanted. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. All right, take care. See you later. Cheerio. Colin showed me a venison that was just brought in. We were going to prepare it and take a few choice pieces for the preparation of our meal. So we're going to make some haggis? Sure. Let's okay. go. Let's grab the stuff for me. Okay. So the beasts, when they, when they shoot them... Right. They gralach them. Gralach? Well, well said. Gralach. Which basically means they gut them. They gut them there right. and then. Liver, kidneys, heart, lungs. I know, but people think that haggis, haggis is uh, such an unhealthy thing. I mean, these are not unhealthy products. No, these are, these are as pure as it gets. I think we live in a world where people have lost contact with real food. Right. You know, this thing doesn't come in a backpack. This no. Is, this, is, this is real. Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, and the nonsense is that half the time, the innards of animals are getting used in processed foods that people are right. eating anyway and they don't even know they're eating it. That's right. This is the way to treat it with a bit of respect. Absolutely. In the highlands, they were so poor right. that what they used to do was they would actually bleed the animals, collect the blood in oatmeal, yeah, yeah. season it up, cook it. That yeah. was the basis of haggis. That's how absolutely rudimentary this dish used right, to be. Right, 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 right. Kidneys, again, pan-fried, absolutely off the scale, delicious. Yeah, that's right. Very strong with the venison, but liver, again, pan-fried. So, onions? Any garlic? Nope. No garlic. garlic. No native. Next right? stop from here is Iceland. We don't use garlic. <laughs> if you're lucky, you get to do what we're doing, which is use butter. Okay. More likely, they used large animal fat animal fat of any description this has to be good it's got lots of butter Three. nearly the same quantity of onion to meat right yeah. full of sugar right? oh absolutely now, they're not entirely going to brown they're going to melt down a wee bit i don't know if you can get the smell of this but man is turning me on this is awesome you sure that's not just because you're standing next to me <laughs> Black pepper, dried or fresh thyme. Okay. Oh, what is that? Allspice. This is a secret spice blend that dates back from his dad and uh, God knows beyond that. I can't tell you what's in it because I cannot even tell and he's got a poker face. He won't tell me either. But this is what makes the haggis from this place the best in Scotland. This has, been, this has been skimmed, but it right. still has some natural pattern right. on top of it, right? right? So we're taking that as well. 
And this is pheasant stock. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is a total peasant culture, right? I mean, that, that's how it is. Food is food. You eat everything or as much as possible. You suck on the bone, you remove the inside, you just uh, taste the flavors and then discard the bone, somebody else will eat it. Yeah? All right. Let's go over right. here. We're going to mince it. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's starting to look like Agus. No. <laughs> so you can see the consistency that's coming oh, yeah. out. It's very wet. Yes. Kind of gooey looking. There you go. Okay. One ingredient that is not so secret is pan fried oats. Okay, so basically, you got to get that nice and hot. See how it's still cooking in the pan there, going nice oh, and brown yeah. on the edge. Straight in. That's the magic of that. Okay, get the start. Starting to drink up the liquid. See how it's drying out? Yeah. And it, and it cooks itself in now. That's it. That's it. We're done. Oh, it's looking great. Sorry. <laughs> what a flavor. That is awesome. That really is good. It's full on. It's full on. I can't wait to have a plate of that. Let's go do it. Okay, let's go. To me, that, this that, has got the spicing also. It's a little bit hot. It's, uh, it has a lot of good spice in there. A lot of pepper in there. Mm. A lot of herbs in there. Yeah. And a one very oh. exotic spice. You made a believer out of me, man. Excellent. Slange. Slange. Colin wanted to cook in his home kitchen, and get this, he invited a couple of his mates over to taste the food we were going to make. But I'm not worried. If they don't like the food, Colin is just going to escort them out. Hey, these are those uh, scampi. Uh, Slangustine. Okay, okay. Come on, give us a break. <laughs> well, I figured they looked so good that we should really have some. Just yeah, nibble absolutely. between courses. Stuff is getting bored. Okay, how, how, how are we making them? Uh, it's simplest way possible. Boiling them yeah. until it comes back to the boil. Okay. By about a minute. Okay. Straight out, eat them hot, refresh them, eat them cold. It's entirely up to you, mayonnaise, especially. Fantastic. Straight in. All right. Forget it. Until it boils again. Just let it come back to the boil. Almost a minute. And we're talking, well, when it comes back to the boil, we're talking like a minute, minute and a half. Done. Okay. Perfect. What's next? Well, we're going to eat the haddies that we saw. So we've got some lime, which is very unscottish. But we're using turnip, which again is this most peasant. Okay. What is um, Scottish? Limes. What is limes? Oh, that! Okay. <laughs> what are these called I'm in the rest of the world? Lime. Lime, cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take the tail off because it's a wee bit over smoked and a wee bit tough. Throw in some of that. Let it break down a wee bit. Alright, okay. There you go. No, I need... I love that. I, I would eat that in a salad, you know? Yeah. Turn it with a little lemon. Yeah. How <laughs> beautiful that is. You want, you want, like, literally, just to take the edge off it. Just a splash. So, yeah. let's see. Yeah. Less than that, less than that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll save it on Stop. That's it? Yeah, absolutely. Just Otherwise, it becomes sweet. You don't, want, you don't want any sweetness. You want the... No, you want the, the pungent yeah. flavor of the lane. Lane? Lane. Lane. You say it, you say it right. Okay. Lime. 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 Okay. I'll master the accent. Don't worry. Right? You will? You will. You've got to be a wee bit careful that the oil doesn't seal the fish before That's it starts right. to cook. So it's just right. a quick mix and then break the whole lot together. Yeah. Just like that, eh? Yeah. Even more seasoning. So then you still get all of the spices and the oil and uh, everything mixing. Yeah. yeah now now I'm starting to get the juices flowing over here. All right, the smoked taddy is looking good. There you go. Okay, now, you now do let's that. flatten it up. I've got some quail's eggs. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Look at how red these things are. That's amazing. So, a wee pinch of cumin. Okay. Okay, right on top of them all. Now, you don't want it too much. Right, yeah. Right? And it kind of just lifts the yolk just that wee bit. It's very Moroccan. Perfect. I like them cooked like that too. I, I like them soft. I like all my eggs a little bit soft. You know? Right, here we go. Perfect. A wee bit more health for everyone. <laughs> this is a beautiful dish. Look at that. This is smoked taddy. Smoked taddy salad with lime, turnip, honey, and quail's eggs. I mean, can I get any better? Mm.
friend. Now it was time to prepare the langoustine. Oh, one lost is on. All right. So shall we set them nicely? Yeah, absolutely. These langoustines look so delicious. Oh. It's okay, right? That is so sweet. Martin, how are you? Pleasure. Pleasure, man. The Hattie and Langoustine was so good that we didn't do much talking. Just eating. Ah, fresh Langoustines. What a beautiful, delicious, fresh starter. But that was just a ruse to get us all to want more food. Beets, kale, raisins. Are very, 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 very basic ingredients, right? Yeah. That one. Barley. Barley. I mean, that's... That's basically what the Scottish economy runs on. <laughs> For the main course, Colin pulled up venison strip loins. They were gorgeous. Forget his mates. I wanted to eat that. That's a whole strip loin. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. It's a whole saddle. It's a whole saddle. Oh, baby. It's wild. It's fresh. It's organic. It's low in fat. It's high in taste. It doesn't get better, you know. This is something that will withstand a Scottish winter. <laughs> yeah. So the poor buggers living up in their croft houses right, up north, right, right. this is what they lived on. And these things, you just Gorgeous. you just cook them a wee bit, and they're like sweets, you know. They're just full of sugar, magnificent. Bit of butter, bit of olive oil. Right? Um, I think yeah. that's a bit too good yeah, for what so we're going to do. Yeah. yeah, it's going to break it down. It's not going yeah, right. to. Not going to treat it properly. No, so right. we've gone from health. Yeah not quite so healthy. But this is healthy too, in the right amounts. Well, we're going to put in three times that much. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going to go, I'm going to brown these first right. Okay, I don't want perfect. any moisture in there. These Absolutely. take a while to brown. Yeah, they do. Huh? And you want it to go like sugar puffs. It, it, it increases the nuttiness. Okay. Right? Okay. Basically, this is just like risotto. You're toasting it. Yeah. In, in risotto, we just toast it to seal the grain. Here, you're doing exactly the same. Um, you'll see, you'll see the difference in here. In Scotland, is a term peely wally. Peely wally. Peely wally means very pale. This is pale. It's going to be a golden, rich brown by the time it's okay. finished. Okay. So that's what they told me this morning when I was trying out the kelp. Which bit are you? They told me about the legs. All right. Know, okay. The peely wally. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's uh, firm, beautiful mushrooms. Scotland, I mean, it is, it is renowned for having good produce, but the mushrooms, yeah. when, the, when the season's on, the forests and fields are full. The smell, of eh? magnificent. But the smell of it is great. Where do you want this? All right, I think we're nearly ready to get that in. I got about a, a hundred slices out of it. Go for it. Nicely done. Now when it gets to this stage, right, oh, it's, that's nice. it's yeah. rapidly turning brown, so you have to pay it more attention now. Yeah, it's not exactly it's toasting. I'm going to nip outside and get some bailey. Sure. The barley and mushrooms were cooking nicely. You got my hands? All right. After lightly pan frying the beets, we popped them into the oven to roast. So I've washed it up, sliced it, not too fine, not too rough, right? Straight in, a couple of minutes, and it's a really fibrous vegetable. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Colin poured the kale into cold water to cool it off. Then all I had to do is just squeeze the excess water out and get it ready for our dish. Okay, so the pan's hot now. There you go. I gotta refresh my steps. Sear these off. I'm going to lift those out yep. and finish them off in the same pan as the beetroot. Perfect. All right, and then I'm going to use this pan to just do it to do the kale. Sure. Because I'm getting sick of doing the dishes while we go here. You ain't getting no help from me anyway. <laughs> right, well, that risotto is now. How are we doing? Yeah. Good. A couple yeah. minutes for oh, there. I'm nearly yeah. ready to finish it off. So we're going for pine nuts, which have disappeared. Pine nuts right here. Back there. If there is any left, I'll be munching on it all along. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right, sugar. Yep. The all important. 
Yep. Uh, Sugar lies. Raisins? Uh, dry or uh, did you soak them? No, they're not soaked. No, no, so, so just dry, you're going to take advantage of the moisture yeah, in there. Yeah. At this point, that's about as full on, I think, as it needs yeah. to be. But we do have an Irish cheese called Kalia, which is kind of like a light mimolette. Oh, good. Right? Which brings a real sweetness to it. But for my money, we'll probably get enough season in there. So I think the cheese will tip it. What do you think? I, I agree with you. Right, cool. so you don't want to kill it. Yeah. It's one of the best barley risotto I've ever had. This barley risotto looks so good. There's only four of us. There's only four of us. So then let's put a little bit more. <laughs> you want to leave one side for the meat? I would put the meat right down the brown and we'll put the beetroot over to one side. Okay. If I look confused, it's because I am. I'll pretend I understood that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm putting it all on one side, you're gonna put the beets in the other. I'm gonna put beets down the middle and meat. Beets on the left, meat straight down the middle. This is like butter. And without having too much butter on it either. I think we made up for it elsewhere. Oh. Yeah, we did. There you go. Yeah, the honey should take care of the slight bitterness in yeah, the skin, yeah. but that's by all means, it's not bitter. I no, mean, no, honestly, no. I, I had them before and uh, a lot more muddiness on the flavor, you know, these, these are perfect. Perfect caramelized mice. Perfect caramelized mice. There you go. There you go. Right, guys. All right. Things up. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up and eat, man. The meal was a hit with Colin's friends and with me, too. Now, we took our time and had a great conversation. We weren't going anywhere because we had lots of food on the table and, of course, good wine. I really got to know Colin, and with his three Glasgow restaurants, he still finds the time to sit down with his friends and family and cook a great meal. And why wouldn't you, when you have great stuff like venison, langoustines, haddies, just outside your door? I want to thank you for, for really showing me that uh, no matter what the amount of uh, variety that you have, you can always pull out something good. The langoustines, this, the, the smokies, the venison, right, the, the, the red beets, the kale. You make kale taste good. That is, that is amazing, you know, and barley, I mean, a barley risotto like this. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much, really, for very, having very me. You're welcome. I think these two enjoyed it too. I reckon they would. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see them smiling <laughs> and eating. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Thank you. Cheers, man. Slange, man. Slange. Yeah, slange. Slange, cheers. Great haggis, great venison, and great wine. <sighs> Glasgow is a wonderful city. Whether it's local food or food from around the world you fancy, you can find it here. The traditional way of doing things has always been to use fresh, locally grown ingredients. But somewhere along the line, the system was lost. But now, thanks to chefs like Colin Clydesdale, the proven method of cooking is back. And you know what I found out? Colin Clydesdale is a great guy and a no-nonsense type of chef. Bon appetito!